This CRKT knife, it is fantastic. It is highly recommended. It is innovative. It is cool. I wouldn't call it ultimately practical, but that's okay. It makes me happy. It'll make you happy. And I was thinking to myself, I almost feel sorry for these guys as I'm doing this batch of KRVs. I kind of feel sorry for them because I'm going to beat up their credit card a little bit. Maybe a lot. <laughs> I know, these are great knives. On the upside, tell your wife this, by the way, uh, they're, they're affordable. These knives are not that much money. They're not. Well below 100 bucks. Actually, they're less than $50. Most of the CRKTs I'm reviewing right now, less than $50. That's pretty exciting to me personally. Still, <laughs> after all these years, even though I can go out and I can get whatever knife I want, I still like high value stuff. I'm not cheap. I'm definitely not cheap. I mean, I'll spend money, but I like getting a lot for my money. And this knife is fantastic. Got some cool things to show you on this tabletop. First things first though, that is an F-35, y'all. Coming out of the Nut and Fancy Aviation Museum. You've never seen that one before. I'm talking the 172nd scale out of our collection, right? That's because it is a newer addition. I've been saving it. This is an F-35 patch. I don't know the squadron. Uh, I don't know. Someone will know. Uh, actually, Last Suspect knows because he got this patch, but it is an awesome patch. Katana F-35 patch. Fantastic. Pretty cool. Uh, vertical takeoff and landing capability here. This is a multinational version, I think. Probably a demonstrator paint job when it was demonstrating for sales, going around, touring. Really nice detail. I wouldn't say like fantastic detail because look at the pilot. It's pretty generic in there. But this thing was super affordable, speaking of value. This was not that much money. I went into eBay, bought it direct. Nice. Look at the internal missiles there. Bombs in there. It's got a nice load out there. It's pretty sick. A cool plane, nice tabletop decoration. You'll see it more and more. I do swap them out a lot. I've got some really cool things to show you. Always trying and striving for, uh, I don't know, just interesting stuff here on tabletop in the bunker. I can't really do it in the field on the barricade because uh, it just does not work. This, by the way, is another CRKT knife. This is a high vas, uh, and it is by Jesper. Foxnass, I think, if I'm saying his name right, I'll review it separately. It is fantastic. It is also recommended and it is also high value for what it is. Uh, that's a coin from the Air Force and I just left it at that. Here we go with this knife, the CEO. Maybe you have one already. Tell us how you, how you like it if you've already purchased the CRKT Columbia River Knife and Tool CEO by Rich Rogers. It's just 2.2 ounces, guys. So that in in and of itself will excite me. I mean, that is a very lightweight knife and it's not that small. It's a 3.1 inch blade on the CEO. Look at that. So this is not a tiny knife and the application is fascinating. And I don't know if I've ever reviewed a knife that has this intention before. Do you know what it is? 
I bet you do. If you think about it, you'll do. Why does a knife look the way it does? That is correct because it is designed, as I will call it here in this KRV, nothing fancy style, an office implement. This is to allow you to carry a blade unnoticed in an office environment, in a professional environment. In fact, perhaps even clipping it to your shirt pocket like a pin, it will draw pretty much zero attention. It will look like a pin. It will look like some type of flashlight perhaps. Look at how slim that form factor is on the CRKT CEO. Great job, Rich Rogers. Does it have drawbacks? Yes, a couple. But for what it is, an office implement, it really nails it. Really nails it. So second cool is such that it's different. It's innovative. It doesn't break the bank. Uh, this one's just like, here we go with high value, 40-ish. Use my links below if you want to support the show and see more knives coming your way. Use my links. Go to Blade HQ, buy this one right here. 40 bucks? Oh, and by the way, Blade HQ is beating Amazon on their prices more and more. I see that more and more. Another reason I'm sending you there. So that's super high value. Uh, super cool knife, if you ask me. It's fantastic. Uh, let's go into the first cool specifics. Now on this version, yes, I have two versions to show you. And the second one is just mind blowing, if you ask me. It really is. I'm such a knife nerd still. You're going to love it. Uh, I'll get there. Hang on, hang on tight, hang with me. This is FRN. It almost looks like CF kind of, but that's just a texturing. So it's fiber reinforced nylon, that's fine. It's not G10, but remember the price on this one, 40 bucks. Does it provide any traction? Plenty for an office knife, plenty. This is not a tactical blade. Uh, EDC blade, absolutely. A knife that you have with you all the time, absolutely. Uh, Office blade is his intention, like I said. Uh, sharp transitions is one of the minor downsides on this, but that is an outgrowth of its design philosophy. I would think, uh, I didn't talk to Richard, but maybe that's what he's after. And so to get the cool looks, then he has a flat end cap right here, sharp transitions. You might be able to use that as some type of implement. Uh, I don't know if I'd use it as a Kubaton type thing, self-defense, but you probably could if you had to in a pinch. There's your clip, it's loop over, it carries tip down. Uh, generally that depresses me. It does and I have to go find a shade tree and think about life for a while to collect my thoughts before I can get enough gumption to keep on with life. <laughs> okay, maybe not to that level, but I gener generally don't like tip down. But in this knife it makes sense because of how it's designed. You know, because you have the angular part right here on the front by the pivot point. And so it makes more sense to put it right here. It is deep carry, it is adequately thick, which is really, if you think about it, remarkable. Because this is designed as an office blade, I'm saying, uh, maybe CRKT, CRKT says it as well, Roger says it as well. But here we can attach it to jeans, tactical pants if you want. I like how it's ventilated. There's no obtrusiveness going into the clip space. Well done on that. Nothing more than the height of the clip material itself. It's strong, it's uh, hardened stainless steel, so it's gonna last better. And it's nice and tight, keeps the knife where it's supposed to be. I like the finishing against the black handle on this version. It's really cool. Stainless steel liners, we don't really need that much skeletonizing, but guess what, it's there. See it on this side? That's pretty fantastic. Maybe that is one reason why it is so freaking light. 2.2 ounces. Don't know if I mentioned that. I know I did. But it's just, I just want to make a point how light that is. O-light coming out. Love the O-lights. They're so awesome. Still using them. There's your stop pin right there on the Sierra KT CEO. Cool name, by the way. It's just, it's just really cool. Easy to remember. Short, sweet. There's no complicated name. No pronunciation problems. Uh, let's look at the lockup here. No problems at all. Let's see how the centering is on the CEO. I'm gonna talk about deployment here in a second. Centering's good. Okay, now here's another negative downside. It is an outgrowth of the design of the CEO. You do have an occlusion here, and I find it almost impossible to come here and get a really fast deployment with the CEO because the, the thumb stud, which doesn't have any volcano issues, it is accessible, it is occluded by the FRN ha handle, 
Uh, it's just so far forward, it's hard for me. Maybe your hand size will work better with it, but I have to come here, change my, my grip, and really kind of choke up on it, and then try to get it out like that. It, it, like I'm demonstrating, it is totally doable, but it's not like it just rips out. It, it, you kind of have to dig it. But it's an office knife, so who freaking cares? At least you can deploy it with one, one hand if you have to. And you might have CEO owners that say, yeah, I flip mine out, no problem, and I, I get you, I get you. Uh, my shoulder's still jacked up, so I gotta try this with left hand. Detent is perfect. It's not gonna pop open in your pocket, in your suit pants, whatever, um, in your smock. And then, let's see. The thumb stud is removable. Micro Torx, if you wanted to do it. Here's the blade. Really love the blade. And I will say this, it's uh, pretty darn sharp. 8CR 13 MOV in this version. And uh, as usual, I don't have any cutting media readily available. Oh, here's one right here, cardstock. No, it's not my big note. Really nice sharpening job on this. CO, fantastic. God, this is a cool knife. And uh, I think the milling on the blade is perfect. So it's flat ground from mid spine. We do have a very short run of a flat portion of the blade for a consistent angle sharpener. I always address that because that's how I sharpen my knives. That's why they're so wickedly sharp all the time. Unsharpened swedge. Uh, talk about a detail tip right here. This is a tip that you can really get some work done. Digging out splinters, do some detail work. Prepare your lunch in the break room. You could cut your muffin in half with this thing and no one, no one would even notice. Really, that is pretty low profile though. Not for just, you know, the whole design of the knife, but for being noticed, it's such a small blade. I don't think anyone would ever even notice if you're using it. It's just, you know, minuscule. Really nice blade, I just love it. No jimping, but that's okay on this design. I don't mind it. Uh, would I use this for self-defense? It wouldn't be my first or second choice, I'll tell you that. But if that's all I have, that's all I have. You know, beats a sharpened toothbrush, I guess. Great knife. Now here comes uber excitement. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, nothing. Bring it. Okay, so this is a Blade HQ prototype. Special edition CEO that is coming out. I don't know when I'm going to post this video. I hope to align it with the issue of this knife. It is their D2 version. And here it is right here. Boom. Oh my goodness, look at that. So this is Jake K. Uh, Knudsen. He's working for Blade HQ. He does these special editions. Oh my goodness, this is so freaking cool. <laughs> this is so cool. While I really love this version, and I do, this one takes it next level. Because now the FRN is gone, we have olive drab G10 with medium traction on it, so it's not obnoxious. We have a blackened, stonewashed loop over clip, same clip, but it has that finishing on it. And then look at the liners on this. So they're anodized kind of bronzish, goldish. Look at that, how against the olive drab that is. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. This is like Microtech cool. And the price is only like 60 bucks. What? 60 bucks for this. I will tell you right now, uh, and I again, I hope to align this when this knife breaks on their website. You need to order this one very quickly because they're gonna sell out. Uh, with or without my video, they're gonna sell out. They, they will, it's fantastic. We have a D2 steel blade, so it's an upgraded steel over 8CR. Super wicked sharp in this prototype even. Black stone washing going on here. Aesthetically, it's just a very beautiful knife on this Blade HQ Special Edition. Now, is it gonna be as low profile as this one? No, because if, I mean, I'm assuming that's what you wanna do. I'm assuming that, oh yeah, I really wanna be low profile, I don't want anybody to know that I have a knife. It's not, it's, but who cares? I mean, it's still pretty low profile. If you like retracted, this is what this one looks like. You know, maybe it will blend in and people go, oh, you know, what is that? If people notice. Let me say this too. I don't like nosy people. They piss me off. They do. Hey, what do you have in your pocket? Well, none of your business, dude. That's what I say. None of your business. It does not concern you. 
Yeah, it's, it doesn't. Uh, both of these knives are just super fabulous, super, super fabulous. Uh, which one do I prefer? You know the answer. The Blade HQ Special Edition, oh my goodness, I just can't rave about it enough. It's cool. It's not a perfect knife. It does have some downsides. I think I've been pretty honest representing them here, but it's 2.2 ounces. The blade shape is awesome. The pocket clip is awesome. Um, you can still flip it out with one uh, hand, of course. Uh, the stock, I'm talking about the thickness of the blade, isn't uh, obnoxious. On this 3.1 inch blade, it's only two millimeters thick. That's perfect for this application. Uh, buy with confidence, uh, beat up your credit card just a little bit, just a little bit, and no, I don't feel sorry for you. Because when you get this, you'll come back to this video and thank me. They're awesome. Nothing Fancy Knife Show. Nice and healthy. See ya.